Hello everyone, my name is Laura. You're watching the Bean Virtue channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I just want to have a little talk about once saved, always saved, eternal security, and the idea that we can walk away from our salvation, that we can abandon the Lord and go into darkness. Is that possible? Before we even start talking about this, I think that it's important to acknowledge why we ask this question. Why is this something that people ponder, think about, discuss, argue over? And I think it comes down to three reasons why people wonder this question so often. One, we know somebody that we love that's a prodigal, that has walked away from the Lord, someone who used to serve God and is now off doing worldly things and our heart is torn for them and we pray for them and we believe and we hope that they will return to the Lord. A second reason why I think we find ourselves asking this question is that we worry about, maybe worry is the wrong word, we have concern for ourselves, and that we don't want to mess this up. Is it possible that I can go through this faith journey and fail? Am I going to lose my salvation because I sin a lot? Um, we're looking for validation for ourselves. And the third reason why I think we ask this question so much is because we've seen leaders, people that we were sure were following the Lord. Maybe it was a leader of a worship band, a author, a preacher, a TV teacher, and they fell away from the Lord. Um, maybe they even publicly renounced their faith. And we find ourselves asking questions, why? How could this happen? Were they really a Christian the whole time and now they've walked away? Or does that mean that they were never a Christian and they were faking it the whole time? And I think it's human nature that we want answers. We want to know what happened. We want to know how it's going to end. And for those types of things, I think it's important that we realize that God is good, which is like the theme of my whole channel, is that the Lord is good that God is steadfast, he wants good things for us. And I think that when we evaluate these things and think about these topics, we have to think about everything under the light of God is good, he wants good things for me, he wants to bless me, he wants me to walk in his ways and his will, and that the Lord is faithful, the Lord is unchanging, and he's not gonna be the one to ever walk away or abandon you. And I think we have to start with that foundation. The Lord will never abandon you. There's promises in the, in the word of God that says that God will not forsake you. He will be with you to the end and that he will provide for you whatever you need to get through every trial and that, the God, that God won't allow you to be tested beyond what you can bear. So with that as our foundation, I want to start with a few verses that just talk about the Lord and his nature. The first one is Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. In Job 9, 10, it says, He does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. Yet when he comes near, I cannot see him. And when he moves by, I do not see him go. And in Malachi 3, 6, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, the sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. And then in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those are some important Bible truths that we can hold on to and remember. I know myself when I feel like I'm concerned about, you know, messing up or I feel like I, when I feel very vulnerable in, in my flesh nature, I want to pray like, you know, bumper bowling where they put this, the, what they call them the snakes in the, in the gutters, so that every time you roll, the bowling ball is guaranteed to hit a pin, right? Sometimes I feel like praying like that, like, Lord, um, put the bumpers in my gutters so that my ball stays on course. Um, I think it's okay to pray things like that. Like, we, we don't want to fail, and as long as our heart is that, it's showing in itself that our desire in our heart is to please the Lord, which means that it's not to stray from the Lord. We're not renouncing our faith. Um, but there are a lot of Bible verses that show that we need to hold firmly onto our faith. 
that we cannot grow lax. We need to be proactively pursuing our relationship with the Lord. And so I want to cover a few of those verses um, where it talks about those kinds of things. Starting with um, Colossians chapter 1, it starts with, If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. And so he's talking about, you know, if. Um, <clears throat> okay, so maybe I should go back and read from the beginning of that because it kind of sounds like it's starting in the middle of a sentence. And although you were previously alienated and hostile in attitude, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his body of flesh through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. The next one is Hebrews chapter 3, where it says, Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold firmly to our confidence and boast in our hope. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, For it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn away from the holy commandment handed to them. In Hebrews 13, verse 5, Make sure your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever abandon you. So that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid, what will man do to me? And another one, on Philippians chapter 1, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work among you will complete it by the day of Jesus Christ. And Amos 3, verse 3, Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? And we have to agree to walk with the Lord. Um, that is the belief uh, journey. We have to believe that there is a God, there is one God, the triune God, Jesus is the Lord, that he lived a sinless life, died and rose again, just as is in the scriptures, and that he rose and conquered sin and death, and that believing in his blood sacrifice gives us eternal salvation. And that God will never abandon us, and he's not going to forsake us. But he is steadfast and sure, and he wants us to do well. Yet, I think that we do have to choose every day to continue in belief. And we don't want to let, um, I mean, God doesn't expect us to do anything perfectly. And he knows that we're going to have shortcomings. He knows that we're going to fail. And if you ever think, like, well, I had a big, big sin or a big, so God can't forgive that, banish that thought because the Lord is gracious and merciful and willing to forgive everything. And so um, we can take heart in that security that the Lord, um, he is good and he wants to, he wants to forgive us. Um, now here there's a verse in 1 Corinthians 15 where it says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which you also stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So I was thinking, well, what is it, unless you believe in vain? What does that mean? And to believe in vain means to have no result and produce nothing and be useless. And when we talk about producing that makes me think about Jesus is the vine and we are the branches in John 15. And that whole chapter, Jesus is, is um, giving this illustration of a tree and, you know, bearing fruit when we're, when we're attached. We are bearing fruit and that's, that's the goal. But that if we are not attached, that the branch will wither up and be cast into the fire. So people have different interpretations of what this chapter means. Um, but I would say take some time to read it. Um, let's see, it says, 
Uh, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples, just as the Father has loved me. I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And right there we see, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, so that your joy may be full. So I love that Jesus says his intention for saying this. Why is he saying this message? He's saying it so that your joy may be made full. He's not saying it so that you may be filled with anxiety and fear. He's saying this message so that our joy may be made full. So that we will be motivated to stay attached to the vine. Because when we stay attached to the vine, we are promised to bear much fruit. That, that's a promise. Um, my father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And that is just amazing. Jesus shares this because he wants us to live an optimized life. And we are living an optimized life when we're abiding in the Lord. That's so key, so critical. Um, let's see. Um, the next verse I want to just say, John six thirty seven. all that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Jesus is promising he will not reject anyone that the father draws to him. And then John six forty four. no man can come to me except the father, which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up on the last day. That's a promise. Um, let's see, John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them. They follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall by no means perish forever and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. And another word for snatch is pluck. Some versions say pluck, some say snatch. So no one can snatch you out of God's hand. Um, let's see. I think that um, as far as analyzing, you know, were people Christians, you know, let's say a prominent person, back to the one of those reasons why we, we wonder this, somebody that we know was maybe a leader in the Christian faith and then they renounced their faith. Um, can we ever really know if they were truly saved or not saved? I mean, the Bible seems to say that only the Lord knows the heart. And I know that people can be very deceptive. I mean, it could be that, you know, people play the part. Maybe they don't really believe. Maybe they half believe. I don't know. I think that that's one of the things we don't actually have to understand. Um, I think what we need to understand is that we don't know the true heart of man. I think that that's something that's more important for us to recognize. But that God does know the true heart of a man. And I think part of it is just trusting that God is going to know and he, he knows his, his children and that if we have a prodigal in our life that we can, you know, please keep praying for them, do not give up on them and just trust the Lord to do things to draw them to the father. And if it's, you know, rationalizing a leader that we saw that fell away, trusting that we'll just never know the heart of a man. I, I mean, we can try to guess 
and we can look at the fruit of somebody's life and see if they're genuine or real, but some people are really tricky. Sometimes you just never really know, and it's okay to not know. Um, and then the other thing, you know, closing is fear for ourselves. Um, if you're afraid of losing your salvation, that in itself indicates that you really do care. I mean, and I think that if you really do care and you really are trying, that's evidence that you're saved. Um, you know, faith is evidence of salvation. And um, we know that you, you know, you believe that Jesus is God and you accept that gift. And it's that easy being saved, just believing that Jesus is God and then accepting that gift. And that's all it takes to be saved. So if you haven't made that decision, um, do it. You know, it's the best choice you'll ever make. And the Holy Spirit will fill you. And he will lead you in paths of righteousness and truth and wisdom. And he'll grow in understanding. And he'll bring people into your life to help grow your walk. And God is for us. And so he's going to do everything he can to help us along the way. And especially if we're praying for assistance, if we're praying for wisdom, if we're praying for the Lord that we, um, that we beat temptation, um, that he make our paths straight, um, you know, the Lord's prayer, um, we're praying for these things and the Lord will continue to intercede and he will not be the one to ever abandon us. And we have to make sure, you know, that we are, doing our part in wearing the armor of God to protect us from enemy attacks and that we are abiding in the Lord, abiding in the vine and staying with the Lord because as long as we are close to him, we cannot fail and he will see us through to the end. And I think that we all sometimes just want that little confirmation, that little um, reminder that you know, God is not going to abandon us. He's not going to forsake us and he's unchanging and he's good and, and he knows you and he forgives. And if you mess up, we just ask for forgiveness and we keep going. And, um, I don't know. So, you know, feel free to, to share your thoughts below. I hope that that is a comfort to you guys. We don't have to know all the answers. Uh, fortunately that is not a requirement of Christianity. But I just wanted to kind of provide some verses and hopefully help people with that question that we fight. So thank you and see you all.